Hi, Tony DeWitt here, Missouri appellate attorney and a guy who likes to make the law make sense on YouTube. But you know what? I have not been making the law make sense. I read through the comments on my Daryl Brooks video, and holy cow, you guys make the law make more sense than I do, I think. I want to go through some of your comments today and uh, offer my thoughts about it. There may be too many for us to do in one video. I may have to do two videos because there's this silly 15-minute limit. If I didn't get your comment in these videos, it is not because I didn't want to. It's just from oversight and because there were so many. But I appreciate every one of them. Uh, but at any rate, I want to uh, go through some of this with you. This is absolutely golden. You know, lawyers think they know a lot about trials. They do. They think they know, and, and they do know a lot about the rules and the procedures and that kind of things. But sometimes they know absolutely sick them about people. And the reason they don't know about people is because having had legal training, it teaches you to think in a particular way. And a lot of times you forget that there are just good, normal people out there going through good, normal lives. And these comments demonstrate better than anything I could say exactly what my point was yesterday, which was that he is hurting himself, and he shouldn't be. And I also want to clear one thing up. I said I felt bad for him because he had to carry the moral guilt of killing those six people. And somebody pointed out, I don't think he carries any moral guilt. And I think you're probably right. Um, he may never come to the point of having remorse for what he did. And somebody also pointed out the fake crying, and I think we'll get to that here in a little bit. But before I start with the comments, I just want to thank every one of you who took the time to make a comment and share your opinion on the video, uh, because I think you added a lot to the channel, and I would encourage you to continue to do that. Thank you so much for watching this and for commenting. We're going to go to the comments in just a second, but I want to point out that I'm going to do voiceovers, and as a result, it's probably going to sound a little different and perhaps a little... Uh, less have a little less volume uh, because of the way things work but I will try and clean that up in post-production if I can all right let's go take a look at these comments so Kathleen says I don't feel badly for Mr. Brooks I feel badly for everyone else in the courtroom Kathleen everyone feels pretty much the same way and um, YT says yeah the person who doesn't identify by that name is a shining example of ignorance what a great way to put it, a shining example of ignorance, and why it's also a horrible idea to represent yourself. Again, I couldn't agree more. He's doing a lot more harm to himself than he would be if he was letting a lawyer represent him, because a lawyer would stick to the facts, and we would be a much further along than we are right now. And uh, Frank Dank says, I know nothing. The most honest, intelligent thing he has ever said. Boy, I couldn't agree more with that either. You know, it's one thing to admit that you don't know something, but to act like you know it uh, and then be confused by what you don't know is just beyond the pale. And I also like this comment from Little John Big John. Prolong our misery, not so much his. This is a masterclass on how abusive people manipulate, gaslight, and abuse everyone they can. Well, let's think about this. He knows this trial is being live streamed. He knows that it's being publicized. He knows that he has a huge audience out there watching his every move. This is like his grand time to shine and show us all how much smarter he is than anyone else. And the sad fact is he probably thinks he's demonstrating this. And I can almost guarantee you that when he goes to jail or when he goes to prison, he will have more groupies than you can shake a stick at. Oh, Daryl, you did such a great job. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to disabuse people of that notion. And E.G. points out that uh, the, the syllogism doesn't work. Sovereign citizen, the law doesn't apply to me, I'm innocent. You're breaking the law and infringing my rights. You know, you can't have it both ways. And then uh, Debbie Falson Cook says, thank you so much for explaining this. Other lawyers have been more interested in pleasing their fan base than actually explaining things. Well, I should probably tell you what my superpower is. Long before I was a lawyer, I was a normal person. In fact, 
I uh, was a combat medic in the United States Army. I got out of the Army and became a respiratory therapist. I did that for 13 years. And if healthcare hadn't uh, degraded into a money-making business instead of an actual caregiving business, I'd probably still be doing it. But because I couldn't get anybody to listen to me as a therapist, I became a lawyer, and that's how I got into the job that I do now. But I appreciate your comments, Debbie. I appreciate them very much, and thank you so much for that. But of course, there is also a um, contrary view. Gunsmoke here says this guy didn't explain anything that's not obvious to a layman, and the rest is just his opinion. For example, it's my opinion that someone facing 77 counts, this trial is moving much more rapidly than it would if it were represented by competent lawyers. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that part of it. I do think that it's, I'm trying very hard to explain everything that happens in in layman's terms, because although I could use a lot of legal terms and make it sound fancy, uh, all that does is uh, sort of buttress my ego, because, hey, I know all these fancy words. Nobody needs to hear fancy words. They need to know what's really going on, and that's what I try to do on this channel. I try to make the law make sense. Now, sometimes you can try as hard as you want, and it still doesn't make sense, but that's what I try to do. But I appreciate the comment, and like I said, to a certain extent, I think the gentleman's right. But in terms of uh, would it move faster if there were experienced public defenders representing him, I doubt it. The objections would be a lot better, there would be a lot more leading question objections, and these, those would be sustained a lot more often. But as someone has pointed out in here, there's not much danger of an appeal for ineffective assistance of counsel here, so you don't have too much to worry about in that regard. And I'm going to apologize for cutting off part of this comment here, but I agree. It is like watching a car crash in slow motion. And, you know, you don't want to necessarily see the end of it. Maybe you want to close your eyes toward the end, but you also just have this curiosity about what in the world is the next stupid thing he's going to say. Uh, so there's a part of you that wants to keep watching, and I agree, he is not doing himself any favors. And then William uh, Shepley talks about he's trying to get the judge to hold him in contempt. But again, this is in order to claim bias later on. Well, the judge was biased against me. Look, she held me in contempt. Uh, that would not be a claim that would be well received at an appellate court. And uh, he's hanging himself. That's true. She knows her role. She knows what she's doing. She's been very patient. I think this would be a fun judge to try a case in front of because she's good on the law. She's good on her rulings. And she makes a ruling and says, hey, let's move on. Now, of course, with Brooks, that doesn't always work. But again, she's trying to keep from being manipulated by him. And she's doing a good job in that regard. And these comments speak for themselves. No need to feel bad for a narcissist. They know full well what they're doing, and it's purposeful. Shannon, you're right. Alina says, I feel badly for the six people who he murdered and the 64 he injured. I'd forgotten that he injured 64 people. And that, um, that's also something that, as a former healthcare professional, I know, you know, just because you get a broken bone doesn't mean it goes back the way it was. And so those people are probably suffering too. And as the person pointed out, as Nick Ballone pointed out, he has no moral guilt, no remorse. He didn't shed a tear in the police interview. His only regard was for his life, not for the people he killed. And in reference to uh, Eileen's six people dead and 64 injured, Miles DeForney says he doesn't even care about his own kids. He owes about $50,000 in unpaid child support. And uh, Lady Maria says, uh, no surprise there. I'm waiting for him to make some reference to them to garner sympathy. Yeah, you can't send me to prison for life because I've got kids. Well, you should have thought about that before you ran over six people and killed them. And then our commenter makes note that uh, he already has tried to garner uh, some kind of sympathy on behalf of his children because they're being bullied, which should never happen. You know, as, as a kid, you're not responsible for the dumb things your parents do. Um, and uh, so bullying his children has that should be absolutely forbidden. Uh, and then Stephen says that we're fortunate that we have a patient judge who's going to make sure that uh, she exercises patience and doesn't give him grounds for an appeal. And he's got that nailed. That is absolutely accurate. And then uh, PBJ says this guy is going to get the max because he's a complete pain in the butt, which, again, I couldn't agree with more. And Kristen, thank you for your kind comments. And I got a kick out of this comment, too, by Sky, where they say, 
Uh, Brooks, no one tells me what to do. Sheriff, let's go back to jail. Brooks, okay. <laughs> you know, Mr. Brooks better get used to having people tell him what to do because I'm pretty sure he's going to have a lot of people tell him what to do when he gets to the prison system. And then I like all three of these comments. He says the judge can't tell him what to do. I guarantee you the judge can tell him what to do. She's just exercising restraint not to. And then uh, Bruce says he, Mr. Brooks should be on the prosecution's payroll because he's convicting himself. Again, right on. He's nailed that one down. One of my favorites, though, is this 1981 objection so far. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what he's doing with these injections. Basically, uh, this is like hunting with a shotgun when you really can't see what you're shooting at. He doesn't have a good feel for what makes a good objection, and so... He just objects, and it seems like his two favorite are relevance and uh, leading. And, you know, there's a place for those kinds of objections, but when you're trying to establish foundation, a lot of times uh, the leading questions are allowed. And as to relevance, you know, the, the test for relevance is anything that tends to make a fact of consequence to the determination more or less probable. And so it's a broad definition of relevance, and it's up to the court to determine whether or not something is relevant. Arguably, the lyrics to his rap song would have been relevant, but the question there, even though the court didn't get into it, was whether they were more prejudicial than probative, meaning is it more likely to prejudice or make a, make a, have the jury make a determination on the basis of emotion as opposed to the basis of factual relevance or the ability to prove what his intent was. And a video that he recorded long before this doesn't necessarily show what his intent was on that day. So you can understand why the judge kept it out. I think that was a good decision on her part. And then um, I, I like this comment too where he says, Daryl Brooks was fine when he wanted credit cards and an ID. <laughs> you know, he needn't worry about uh, needing the name of Daryl Brooks any longer. When he goes to prison, he's going to be a number, and that's all he's going to be. Uh, when he was arrested by police, he told people, people that his name was Daryl Brooks. Therefore, the person he was when he committed the crime was Daryl Brooks. Again, it is amazing to me how, how you all see the logic in that, and he does not. Um, he also... It, Danya points out that his objection salad is driving me nuts. Well, that's the entire point of the objection salad. That and the fact that he's trying to perhaps hit something he can't see. And uh, Red Carbon, again, thank you for your comments. I appreciate that you found this helpful, and I will continue to do these, these kinds of videos in the future. Uh, but I love what Spooky Canuck here says. His appeal for his ineffective defenses of defense of counsel claim is going to be an interesting read. Indeed, it will be. Um, you hope that they have the availability of spell checkers in prison. Otherwise, it's going to be a very difficult read, I'm afraid. And on that score, uh, Yvonne Sanders says, don't think you can do that when you're representing yourself. And Yvonne, you're right. Uh, but Spooky Canuck says that won't stop him from trying. <laughs> and I think he's right about that, too. I don't have time for too many more, but let me get a couple in here. This one I loved. Bebop Scrabu. He says, uh, yeah, there's been a couple of moments. Did you get a description of the driver? No, I was too focused on the woman on the hood of your car who I thought was my wife. Again, there have been moments in this trial where just the absurdity of it all has really come forth. And that was one of them. Okay, last one. I think this guy really nails it here. He says, if you stop and think about it, you could very well have convinced the jury it was some freak accident or he had a mental break or there was a malfunction with the car or any number of defenses to get down to second degree manslaughter. Maybe be out in 15 to 25 years. That's probably what his attorney told him to do, but because he's a narcissist, he decided that pleading guilty wasn't a good idea. This is uh, an accurate take on what happened here. Guys, thank you for watching this video. I'm going to end it here, and again, I appreciate all of your content. Thank you. Bye-bye.